want to empower in. So I know last week I asked you guys if you would like to have video blogs about my trip to India. So here is the first segment in these videos that are going to be upcoming. So I actually just arrived to India. I'm in New Delhi and um, I thought I could start off the video series <laughs> with some international travel tips. This is a video that I wanted to record before I left, but uh, somebody, I'm not going to say who, somebody ran out of time. So this is my international travel checklist. So we will start off by making sure the obvious that your passport is up date and also to check to see if you need a visa to enter that country. To enter India, you need a visa, but it only takes four days to get. And it's literally a piece of paper that you print off. Um, it's basically saying you fill out um, your personal information, upload a photo of yourself, and pay money. It's pretty much as simple as that. I know when my husband and I went to Brazil, it was a lot more complicated. We had to actually physically go somewhere. We had to do all kinds of things, and it took up to a month. So it's really important before you plan for international travel that you find out what the requirements are, because you need to know. You don't want to get to the airport, and they won't let you on the plane because you don't have the proper paperwork. <laughs> the next thing that I usually do is I call all of my credit cards and make sure they all know that I'm going to be in India. It just makes things easier knowing that you have several ways to pay just in case you lose a card or something like that. I always just feel more comfortable knowing that I can use multiple cards instead of just relying on one or two, just in case. Even if I may leave you know, most of them in the safe and never use them, it's just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. The next thing that I wanted to do was research on what uh, my phone service would be. So I called Sprint and I found out that my plan includes unlimited text and data, which means that basically once I get here, um, Sprint will allow me to use whatever carrier is most popular here, and I will be able to send and receive text messages for free. I also, uh, when my husband and I were in Italy some years ago, we bought this phone. This is called a Quadra Band cell phone. Quadra Band is supposed to mean that you can use SIM cards everywhere, like in the entire world. Um, and we haven't really tested that theory. Everywhere we've gone has been relatively popular and we haven't had any issues. So my husband bought a SIM card for this, but it said we had to wait 24 hours. So we're waiting um, for 24 hours to pass and then we will activate the phone. So it's really good to have a local number because that leads me into my next tip, which is cost saving apps. So I did some research online and it looks like there's a Groupon for India, but it's called something different. It's called nearby, buy as in B-U-I. So um, there are a few other cost saving apps nearby look like it had the best deals at the best prices. So if you guys would like to see a video going over apps that you can use in India to save money, then give this video a big thumbs up and I will give you some reviews. But um, this app looks just like Groupon. It has massages, um, hotels, food, salons, all kinds of things. So I'm really excited to try these out. Um, yeah, especially the massages because I could use a massage right now <laughs> after that long flight. Another thing that's really important is the currency here, they use rupees, so it's hard for me to tell what the prices are because a thousand rupees is so many dollars, like they just use gigantic numbers um, for dollars. So I um, got this app, it's called XE, so I guess it means exchange currency. And it's great though because I, it gives you the up-to-date um, exchange rate and you can just put in how many rupees, like just for example, I was... Um, trying to, I was talking to the concierge to see how much it would be to get a car for the day and it would be around 3,500 rupees or 53 US dollars. So it's really important to know that so that prior to paying anything you know exactly how much you are going to be paying for it. <laughs> so the next step would be to call the airline that you are going to be flying. Uh, we were flying on an unfamiliar airline. This is the first time that I've ever used this airline. It was called Qatar Airlines. So it's usually for the Middle East or maybe just for Dubai. That's I think where their main hub is. But anyways, it was our first time on there, so I went ahead and called and asked to see what their checked bag um, weight was. 
So they told me it was, I think, 25 kilograms. I think she said 25 kilograms. Would that make sense? Yeah, I think it was 25 kilograms. But so I felt really smart. I was like, okay, good. I'm glad I know that. And I had no idea though when I got to the airport that actually what they really weigh is your carry-ons. I mean, who weighs carry-ons? So it was really annoying because you could only have your carry-on weigh 7 kilograms, which is almost like 15 pounds. And of course every bag I had weighed more than that, so I had to redistribute all kinds of stuff and it sort of just like threw my whole plan off. So. Just remember to not ask only for the checked bag weight, but also for the carry-on weight so that you can pack appropriately um, and just avoid a hassle at the airport. You can sort of find yourself in these awkward situations. So in these upcoming videos, I'm thinking about doing like national sites and monument reviews, maybe a review on which apps are the best to use in India, uh, food reviews, maybe culture reviews. But I just wanted to ask if there's anything specific that you guys wanted to see, especially pertaining to India since I'm here, and if there's anything that you recommend. So um, this is my first time here, and uh, I'm really excited about it. I went to Thailand years ago, almost 10 years ago, and I just fell in love with Asia. I've also been to Japan several times, so I'm really excited to see what India is all about and see what it has to offer. But I am definitely open to any advice that you have. So if there's anything you recommend or any type of video that you really want to see, please post it in the comments below. Also, make sure you follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna put my Instagram link below. And if you would like to sign up for email updates, um, it's going to be a separate email list. I'm not going to blast all of the travel information um, to my regular email subscribers. I just don't think that's fair. But by signing up, you will be signing up for some free giveaways. Um, they are going to be giveaways from something really cool that I find in India. So all you have to do is sign up for the email list and you are entered. <laughs> and of course, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and also click on notifications. Alright guys, so I will see you in my next video. I will talk to you soon. Bye!